Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 7 video by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we'll be doing Unit 7CC Lesson 4 on the Mean Absolute Deviation. That's a mouthful. Thankfully, we'll eventually be abbreviating the Mean Absolute Deviation as the MAD. It's probably got the best like acronym in all of mathematics, the MAD. So anyway, let's kind of jump into it and develop the idea of the Mean Absolute Deviation in a very natural way. All right. So, whoops, did I, did I go too far? I did go too far, didn't I? No, I didn't, here we go, sorry. Ah, oh, there's a blooper, one for the blooper reel. All right, it's important in statistics to be able to measure or quantify the amount of variation that's in a data set, right? That's the whole point of a statistical question is that it's a question that involves variation, differences in data values. Now, one way of doing this is to consider the average distance that the data points are away from the mean of the data set. So in exercise one, we're gonna take a look at two data sets that have exactly the same mean and yet clearly have different amounts of variation in them. So let's, let's take a look at exercise number one. The two dot plots below show data sets, each, have, each that have means equal to 10. And just trust me on that, we'll, we'll kind of be able to verify it a little bit in, in our table work. Letter A. For each data set below, fill in the distances above or below the mean each data value is. Also indicate whether it is above, on, or below the mean. Being on the mean just means that the data point is equal to the mean. All right, so again, we've got this one dot plot that's got values of 9, 9, 10, 10, and 12. And this other dot plot or data set that has values of 6, uh, I guess 8, 9, 12, and 15. All right, now it's easy enough. Let, let me do the first one, right? So the data value of nine, right? That is one unit from the mean and it is, uh, it is below the mean, right? Another data value of one, one unit, and it is below the mean. Uh, data value of 10 is zero units and that's on the mean. Again, zero units and that's on the mean. And the 12 is two units above the mean. Now remember, from our last lesson, right, interpreting the mean as a balance point, notice when we add up the distance below the mean, two units, that's equal to the distance above the mean, also two units, right? Simple enough. Why don't you go ahead and fill in this table for that second data set? All right, let's do it. So a data value of six, that is four units below the mean. A data value of eight, that's two units below the mean. Hello, E. Uh, nine, that is one unit below the mean. Keep in mind the mean is 10. 12 is two units above the mean. And 15 is five units above the mean. All right, now, again, I want you to just keep in mind, right? If I add the four and the two, I get six. Um, and if I add the, uh, well, that doesn't make any sense. Um, six is four units below the mean. Eight is two units below the mean. Ah, right, sorry. If I had the four, the two, and the one, <laughs> that's a little more like it. I get seven units below the mean and the five and the two, right, add them together, I get seven units above the mean. Those two will always balance the distance below the mean and the distance above the mean. Now, let's take a look at letter B. Which data set has values that are more spread out about the mean? Explain from the graphs. So which, which of the two data sets has data that is more spread out above the mean, about the mean. This should be easy enough. Pause the video now and answer either data set number one or data set number two. All right, well, I'm hoping that it's pretty obvious that it's data set two. I mean, when we look at data set one, right, all that data is pretty close together with two values right on the mean, two values that are just one unit below the mean and one value that's two units above the mean. So all that data is very close to the mean. Whereas in the second data set, right, that is far more spread out, right? The data points are much farther away from the mean. So, data set number two. 
the data are generally farther away from the mean. Now, we could tell that right away by just looking at these data sets. Right? By just looking at the data sets, we can see that the data here is very close and tightly grouped to the mean, and here it's way more spread out from the mean. But we want a number that can encapsulate that. And so the easiest thing to do is just to say, well, what is the average distance the data points are away from the mean? Or what is the mean distance the data points are away from the mean? And let's do that now in letter C. Let's take a look. Find the average distance that the data values are away from their means for both data sets. Show the calculations that give you the answers. Well, let's do it for data set one together. Right here, we have data that is one, one, zero, zero, and two. Those are our distances that the data are away from the mean. So if I want the average, right, one, one, zero, zero, and two, I'm going to go 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 2, right, all divided by 5. So that's 2, 4, 4 divided by 5, and as a decimal, which is good to have, that's 0 0.8. So I want you to think about this, right? What we're saying here is that on average, or the average distance that a data point is away from the mean is 0.8 units. And that should make some sense, right? Because we've got these two, which are one unit, sorry, we've got these two, which are one unit away from the mean. We've got this one, which is two units away from the mean. And then we've got these two, which are zero units away from the mean, right? And on average, they're about 0.8 units, not about. On average, they are 0.8 units away from the mean. Now what I'd like you to do is find the average that these are away from the mean. Pause the video now and go ahead and do that. All right, again, simple enough, right? All we want to do is add up those numbers, 4, 2, 1, 2, and 5. 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 5, right? So those are all the distances with a weird looking plus symbol there. Let's try that one more time. Those are our distances that we are away from the mean. All right, 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7, plus 2 is 9, plus 5 is 14, right? And I want this to be a decimal so I can kind of compare it. Maybe I grab my calculator and I really quickly do 14 divided by 5. Helpful to have your calculator anyway when you're doing uh, this kind of math. So we're at uh, 2.8, right? And again, kind of makes sense, right? You know, right around three units on average away from the mean. You know, you get kind of that sense for it. Some of these things are closer than 2.8 uh, units away from the mean. Some of them are farther away than 2.8 units from the mean, but the average that each of these data values is away from the mean is 2.8 units. The mean absolute deviation. That's what we just found, right? What we just found was the mean absolute deviation, the MAD, and you are more than welcome to abbreviate it as the MAD. The word deviation in math refers to how far a data value is away from the mean, right? To deviate, to be away from the average or the center value. So the MAD is literally the average distance that the data points are away from the mean. Now this can be a very long calculation, so we're gonna get some practice on it for the rest of the problems in the lesson. Let's take a look at exercise number two. A sample of eight people exiting a movie or a move, were asked their ages. The data set is shown below. So that's, that's supposed to be a movie. We'll just put a little I in there, right? 
So eight people who are exiting a movie were asked their ages. All right, and here we have it. Letter A asks us to find the mean absolute deviation for this data set, show your work. All right, here we go. So finding the mean absolute deviation takes some time, primarily because the first thing you have to do is find the mean. Right, I'm looking for how far on average these data points are away from the mean, so I have to know the mean in the first place. So that's the first thing you have to do when finding the mean absolute deviation is first, just calculate the mean. So let's do that. So the first thing I need to do, right, is I need to find my sum, right? And that's gonna be my 16 plus 17 plus et cetera, all the way up to 40. For that, I think I'd like my, my calculator just to make my life a little bit easier. Let's bring it up here so that we still have all those sitting there. So I've got 16 plus 17 plus 18. Come on, 18, there we go. Plus 21, plus 23. <laughs> Maybe it would have been easier to do this by hand. Plus 29, plus 36. Come on, 36, plus 40. All right, so we have a sum of 200, right? So we have a mean of 200 divided by eight. Again, could do it by hand, but might as well since we've got the calculator. 200 divided by eight. There we go, 25. All right, we're gonna go back into full screen. We'll come back to our calculator in just a little bit. So that's gotta be our first thing. We've got to have our mean, all right? Once we have our mean, now we need to know the distances that each of our data points are away from the mean. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just draw a little, little dashed line here. Okay. Now those distances you all do by subtraction, okay? But I'm gonna kinda do them in my head because that's easy enough for me to think about, right? If I wanna know how far 16 is away from 25, I'm really doing 25 minus 16. That's a distance of nine, right? Then if I wanted this, the distance that 17 is away from 25, I would do 25 minus 17, that's a distance of eight. 25 minus 18, that's a distance of seven. 25 minus 21, that's getting easier, a distance of four. 25 minus 23, that's a distance of two. Now 29 minus 25, that's a distance of four. 36 minus 25, that's a distance of 11. And 40 minus 25, that's a distance of 15. So again, each one of these represents how far each of these data points is away from our mean of 25. The last thing I have to do is find their average, okay? So the mat itself, the mean absolute deviation, is going to be my nine plus eight plus seven plus dot, 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 plus 15, all divided by eight. Again, let's kind of break out of this, grab my calculator, bring it over here, clear this out. We've got nine plus eight plus seven plus four plus two plus four plus 11 plus 15, aha. So that's a sum of distances. I just lost my calculator there, but a sum of distances of 60 divided by eight. The mat is almost always involves a decimal. It's actually pretty hard to have a mean absolute deviation that's a nice number, like a whole number that is. All right, so our mean absolute deviation is 7.5. Important to understand how to interpret that. The average age of the people exiting the movie, right, was 25. But there's another average now, right? The average distance that a person was, person's age was from 25, was 7.5 years. On average, somebody in this data set was seven and a half years away 
from a mean of 25. Now, let's take a look at letter B. How many of the eight data values fall within one mean absolute deviation of the mean, i.e. they are closer than that to the value of the mean? Show how you found this answer. All right, so, I mean, obviously, if the mean absolute deviation is, on average, how far a data value is away from the mean, then some data values are going to be closer than 7.5 to the mean, and some of them are going to be farther away than 7.5 from the mean, right? That, that makes sense, right? When I ask how many of the eight fall within one, one absolute deviation of the mean, right, I want to know how many are closer than that. And here's how I do that, all right? I take my mean, my 25, and I subtract 7.5. All right, and that's going to be 18. It's going to be 17.5. And then I'm going to take 25 and I'm going to add 7.5. And that's going to be 32.5. Right? Those would be the two values. Those would be the two values that are exactly one mad away from the mean. One mean absolute deviation away from the mean. Okay, anything that's in between these two, in other words, 18 to 32, fall closer than one mean absolute deviation from the mean. So, 18 all the way through 32 would get the job done, and it's just these four. So, four values fall closer than the mean absolute deviation from the mean. And I mean, think about it, right? So 18 is seven units away from the mean, right? 21 is four units away from the mean. 23 is two units away from the mean. 29 is four units away from the mean. All of these fall closer than that distance from the mean. And by the way, four out of the eight values. Roughly half of the data set should fall closer than the MAD and half of the data set should fall farther away. Now that's in a well-behaved data set. You could have some data sets where there's some extreme outliers or gaps or whatever, and that wouldn't quite be the case then, that half and half. But here, this data set is pretty uniformly distributed, so half the data falls closer than the MAD, half the data falls farther away. All right, let's take a look at another problem. Now, the mean absolute deviation can be tricky to calculate because it takes a lot of steps, many, many steps, all right? The first of which will always be to calculate the mean of the data set. And it's kind of annoying because you gotta go through the whole process of calculating the mean, and then once you have the mean, then you have to use it to calculate the MAD. But let's take a look in exercise number three. Jamila is trying to determine the typical amount of time that a seventh grade student spends on math homework each night. She asks a random sample of 10 7th grade students to record the number of minutes they spent on math homework in a given night. The data is shown below. Letter A, calculate the mean absolute deviation for this data set. All right, so I'd like to turn you loose, right? Take some time, use your calculators, right? First calculate the mean, then find the distances that all the data values are away from the mean, and then find the mean of all those distances, and then you'll have your MAD. So pause the video now and take a little bit of time to do that. All right, well the first thing I need is the mean, the mean itself. And again, here, I definitely wanna do it with a calculator. All right, so the mean itself, which then makes me lose my calculator. Um, let's do it, let me clear out the last little piece. Let's do eight plus 12, plus 12, plus 14, plus 17, plus 19, plus 20, plus 23, plus 26, plus 29. Great. All right, so that's going to be 180 divided by 10, and that means my mean is going to be 18 minutes. Okay, so my mean is 18 minutes. 
right? Not my mad, but my mean. The average amount of time that these seventh grade students spent on their math homework was only 18 minutes, which makes me sad. Um, so now what we're gonna do, not as sad as the person who only spent eight minutes on their math homework, but still. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out the distance that each of these data values is away from the mean. All right, so I'm gonna continue to just stay in this kind of mode. All right, my eight, that's 10 units away from the mean. The 12 is six units away from the mean. I've got another 12, so six units away. 14 is four units away from the mean. 17 is one unit away. 19 is also one unit away. 20 is two units away. 23 is five units away. 26 is eight units away. And 29 is 11 units away. Again, all of those things, all of those distances, right, are simply how far the data values are away from that mean of 18 minutes. The final thing I need to do is add all of these things together and divide by 10. All right, so my MAD is going to equal, let's add them all together. Let's clear this out. 10 plus 6 plus 6 plus 4 plus one, plus another one, plus two, plus five, plus eight, plus 11, gives me 54, divided by 10, and that's 5.4. All right, let me go back into full screen view. All right, right? So what I know now is that my average amount of time spent studying is 18 minutes, and then the average that the data points are away from that mean is 5.4 minutes. And as we saw in the last exercise, right, some of these data values are gonna be closer than the 5.4, right, the four, one, one, two, and five, and then some of them are gonna be far, farther away, the 10, six, six, eight, and 11. And notice, it, it turns out to be that perfect five, five split. There's five of them that are closer than that to the mean, and five of them that are farther away from that, from the mean, right? Again, it makes sense. But let's take a look at the last question, letter B. Are there any data values that fall more than twice the MAD away from the mean? If so, which? All right. So, the more we go away from the mean, the less likely that values will be out there, right? The mean is the central value. You expect many values to be close to the mean and fewer values to be farther away. I want to know if there's any that are farther than twice the value of the MAD away from the mean. So first, let's, let's just talk about what twice the value of the MAD is, right? So if I just do two times 5.4, right, I get 10.8. That's twice the value of the mean, mean absolute deviation, right? That's twice the MAD. So now if I wanna find if there's any values that are more than that away from the mean, well, I wanna subtract that from the mean, and I wanna add it to the mean, okay? So first, let's take that mean, which was 18 minutes. The more I say the word mean, the more it sounds strange to me, right? And if I do 18 minus 10.8, I'll get 7.2. Right, and if I do 18 plus 10.8, I get 28.8, right? So anything that is outside of 7.2 to 28.8, from 7.2 to 28.8 would be two MADs or closer to the mean. Anything outside of that, right, would be more than 10.8 units away from the mean. Well, the only one that falls into that category is 29, right? 29 is 11 units away from the mean. And that makes sense that there are very few that are that far away. So only, only 29. It's the only value that, that's that far away. And in fact, you'll find very, very few values in data sets that are more than three times the mad away from the mean. Those would be very unusual. Those would be your seven foot tall basketball players, you know, your, 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 your very, very extreme values in a data set. All right. 
So let's summarize, right? In statistics, it is very important that we have numbers that measure central values. And those are things like the mean and the median. But there's also a need in statistics to talk about how much variation there is in a data set. All right? That gets into things like range and interquartile range. And today we saw a very important one, the mean absolute deviation. Literally, the average distance that the data points are away from the mean. And this can be complicated to calculate, right? Because what you have to do is find the mean, and then you have to find all the distances the data values are away from that mean, and then you have to find their mean or their average. It takes a while because it's literally two averages with some distance thrown in between, but it's very doable if you take your time and if you have a calculator handy. That can really help. All right, we'll work more with the mean absolute deviation as we move on in this unit. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until I see you again, keep thinking and keep solving problems.